As temperatures drop and winter grips the country, the less fortunate in South Africa are preparing for the harsh realities that this season brings. Africa Muslims agencies on the ground distributing blankets, clothing and other essentials to thousands across the country. Sponsor a winter warmth pack for 280 rands to provide blankets, winter clothing and candles to families in need. Donate via Africa Muslims Agency and help us to spread warmth this winter. Africa Muslims Agency commemorating 35 years of empowering, educating, inspiring. Alone we can do so little, but together we can change the world for better. A Nord Educational Centre helps orphans to live a better life. We support them with hope to secure a brighter future. Sponsor an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. A Nord Educational Centre, a place where orphans call home. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And how's all our most beautiful and wonderful ladies of the Tuesday morning housewife forum Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah and glory only belong to Allah And so today, Alhamdulillah, the 10th of Muharram Yomi Ashura 1444, and we're coming to you live here from Masjid Al Quds here in Gatesville, Cape Town, and we also greet all our wonderful viewers on Facebook and YouTube as well to the special program commemoration and celebration of Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram, and as we always say in Cape Town, by a slamat for the in Muharram, mashallah. Yes, it's a special day, it's a special time, it's a special period, but most of all, it is a holy period. It is a sacred period. Since the very beginning, when Almighty Allah created the heavens and the earth, Ashura and the month of Muharram was regarded as holy. So much so that Allah said, in this month, there's four months that are holy. Muharram is one of those four. In this month, no fighting must take place. Muslims cannot start a fight or a war against other people. And in fact, we should never do it. But if you are under attack, then you have every right to defend yourself. But war is not permissible. To wage war or to start a war or a fight or an argument for that matter, it's not permissible in this great month of Muharram and the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura was always sacred. Even before the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the Quraysh also were fasting and they held the day of Ashura to be a noble, a great and a holy day. And also if you look in the lives of other prophets, how the tenth of Ashura was always holy. Great things happened on this day. But as I said in my lecture also last night here in the masjid, I said, Allah made all the great events in history of his great prophets to happen on this day of Ashura. So first and foremost, we know that the greatest and the most authentic tradition with regard to Ashura is 
the day when Allah took Nabi Musa alayhi salam and his followers safe through the passage of the Red Sea, when Allah opened the sea for them, they, Allah made a passage and they all went through. And Fir'aun, who came with his mighty army, he wanted to recapture the Bani Israel into slavery. And he wanted to kill so many of them. And what happened when they came through the passage? Allah ordered the sea water to close. So the day of Ashura always signify the victory of Haq over Batil. The victory of truth over falsehood. This is the main message and lesson that we can learn from Ashura. And so many other events happened. We know the story and I'm not going to go into detail. And it's also not really a story, it is a true event of Nabi Nuh alayhi salam. How Nabi Nuh alayhi salam took his people onto the ark, the ship that Allah ordered him to build. And how they, you know, Nabi Nuh preached to his people for 950 years. Which means in those days people used to live up to a thousand years. Here we get 60, 70. If we reach 100, wow, we make a you and a halabaloo about it. And 100 years go just like that. That is how short our lives are. So short is our lives. That's why I always say there's no time in life for unpleasantness. That's not tight and deliver for unpleasantness and quiet. Or say, leave us to God. Too short. If we are 50, 60, 70, wallahi, we must now live a life for Akhirah only. We are basically finished with this dunya. Now I must prepare my whole life just for Akhirah. Prepare myself for that moment when Malakul Mot is going to stand in front of me and he's going to touch you with his icy hands and in no time your whole body becomes cold and stiff and they have to wash you with lukewarm water, bury you as quick as possible, that your body must not decompose. So short our lives are. How Nabi Nuh alayhi salam alone with his people on the ark was saved and everyone outside the ark was drowning. And the ship, the ark was sailing on the waters, sailing and sailing, Nabi Nuh wasn't sure whether it was safe to go outside yet and suddenly the ship came to a halt. The ship came to a stop. And the, stop, the ship stopped on a mountain which is known as Judi. The Quran calls it Jabal Judi, the mountain of Judi. In the Bible it is said, the, the, Bible, the, the Bible say, the ark stopped on the, on the mountain of Ararat. Now Ararat is a whole range of mountains and Judy is one of those mountains. So the Quran is exact where the ark stopped on the mount of Judy. And the ark stopped there on Judy on this day, the 10th day of Muharram. Allahu Akbar. This is not coincidence. Nabi, Nabi Lut alayhi salam on this day was saved by Allah with his people from the towns of Sodom and Gomorrah when Allah destroyed them because they were the first people who initiated homosexuality and lesbianism. And now Allah destroyed that, that part of the earth, Sodom and Gomorrah, by telling the angels to lift that towns, turn it upside down, crush it to the ground and send down fire from the heaven to burn on Sodom and Gomorrah. This happened, according to some scholars, on this 10th day of Muharram. Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam was tested by Allah because Shaitan said to Allah, Oh Allah, Nabi Ayyub, who is known in the Bible as Lot, you heard of him? Prophet Lot. That's why I always say, they say, the patience of Lot. Lot was a very patient man. Ayyub alayhi salam. So the devil, shaitan said to Allah, he is only so good Allah because you made him rich and he 
He's got no worries. He's got a wonderful family. He's got riches. Why don't you test him? So Allah said, even if I test him, he will remain my servant. Because Allah knows us. But still to please the devil, to show to the shaitan, Allah caused Nabi, Lut, uh, Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam to become leprosy struck. You know, leprosy is a kind of sickness when no one wants to be near you. They used to chase you out into the mountains or into the bush. Go live there because your body looked like deformed, full of swellings and sores and pus coming out of the sores and it was also contagious. So Nabi, <coughs> Nabi Ayyub alayhi <coughs> salam, Allah then tested him with the sickness. And in the process, Allah also caused some of his family and his sons and his daughters to die. And Allah took away his wealth. And no one wanted to come near him. The only one who stood with him was his wife. Now we're connecting this day also with Women's Day. Because who stood with him? A woman who was his wife. She still cared for him. She still did the wifely duty. She would go out to him, make sure that he has to eat, to drink, clean clothes, see to his needs. She stuck with him. And one day she said to him, Oh my husband, why don't you raise your hands and speak to Allah and ask Allah to cure you? And he became very irritable with her and said to her, I'm sure Allah knows the state that I'm in. For sickness and death and life and everything, health comes from Allah. Allah knows my condition and if Allah wills, he will cure me. And his wife persisted and he said to her, <clears throat> when I get better, I'm going to lash you ten lashes for backchatting me. I was like, what's backchat? So, in no time, in no time after that, Allah cured Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam. And shaitan was defeated. And Allah said to shaitan, can you see? This is my servant. Despite what I put on him, he still makes shukr to me. He does not swear me against me. He does not insult me. He does not complain. He's still my good servant. And Allah gave him his full health back. And Allah gave him more wealth, ten times more wealth than what he had before. And Allah also gave him more family members and more khair and barakah in his life because of his patience, because of his sabr. But now, there's one problem. He said to his wife, I'm going to give you ten lashes. But we know it's not permissible to hit your wife. He probably said it in a state, in a, in, a, in a way, when he was a bit taken and irritable. So how now to overcome this problem? Because once you make a, pro um, a promise, you must carry out that promise. Otherwise, you must pay kafara. So through Malak Jibreel, alayhi salam, Allah taught him to take ten straws, you know, grass, put it together, because he said, I'm going to give you ten cuts. So he took ten pieces of grass and hit his wife like that. In other words, he did lift the anhasla. And that is how we should do. Like a baby. If the baby is naughty, the baby needs a hiding. We're not going to take a whoop or a bell to hit the baby. We take the tiny hand of the baby and say, no, no, my baby. The baby doesn't feel anything, but the baby gets that feeling that it is being reprimanded, so the baby cries. So likewise, if a husband is displeased with his wife, what stopped that husband from taking his wife's hand and say, my darling, no, Jay. you know, like that, you hit the lifter in. It's a way of reprimand, but also to show affection and to show love. And this, 
Allah gave Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam his health back on this day, the 10th of Muharram. And many things happened before the Prophet sallallahu and after the Prophet sallallahu left this earth. Like 60 years after the Prophet left this earth, the Nabi sallallahu grandson, Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu an, was killed brutally. By who? By Muslims. By Muslims. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his lifetime one day received a visit. Some hadith say it was Jibreel alayhi salam who came to him. Some hadith say it was the angel of rain who came to the Prophet for the very first time and the Prophet was informed that, O oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there will come a time when your lovely little grandson, Imam Hussein, will be severely and brutally killed by your own people. And the Prophet cried. The Prophet cried. Tears were streaming down his eyes. And the angel said to him, Shall I give you some of the dust and the soil of the land where he will be killed? And the Prophet said, yes. And the angel stretched out his wing and pulled it back and he gave the Prophet some soil, which was from the land of Karbala, which is near the land today of Iraq. And the Prophet put it in a cloth and gave it to one of his wives to keep. And said, when that soil becomes red and bloodied, <clears throat> you must know that time is the day that my grandson Hussein will be killed. And it happened just like that. So all these things, <clears throat> we can't say today, yeah, but Karbala only happened 60 years after the Prophet, it has got nothing to do with us. The Prophet was told about this, and the Prophet told us about it in the Ahadith. And after all, <clears throat> These were not only the grandson of the Prophet, but his immediate family, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa plus minus 70 of them were brutally killed, including women and little children, by a person whose name was Yazid. Because Yazid wanted to be the ruler, the Khalifa of the Muslim world, and he was an evil man and he was a drunkard, and Imam Hussein was not prepared to accept him as a leader. And the more he insisted Imam Hussein must come to him and give him his hand, his pledge of allegiance, Imam Hussein said, no, I will never do that. I will never betray the deen of my grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu And for this, Yazid ordered that Imam Hussein must be killed. And they met 70 he and his family and the close people who were with him, they were about 70. And the army that came on was thousands of them. Thousands. And the more Imam Hussein asked him, why do you want to kill me? Here I'm standing with the Quran. I am the same grandson which you saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed me and my brother Hassan to play on his back even while he was in sujood, in salah. The Prophet used to take Imam Hussein and Hassan and used to kiss them on their lips and kiss them on their forehead and played with them like any nana or grandfather would do. The Prophet loved him so much that the Prophet said, Hussein minni wa ana min Hussein. Hussein is part of me and I am part of him. And ultimately Hussein was killed. His head was chopped off. His head was kicked around like a football. And his head was then placed on a spear, taken to various towns and cities that, that Yazid showed the people, if you don't fear me, this is what will happen to you. But the death of Imam Hussein has revived the Ummah. It is giving life to the Ummah. And the memory of Hussein alayhi salam is alive in our hearts. Whereas the memory of Yazid, everyone who hears his name basically curse him.
no du'as for him. Those who laughed then, they are crying now. Imam Hussein and his family and followers who died for the sake of Allah by not compromising the principles of faith and justice and love for Islam, they are today laughing because Hussein knew that day that he's going to be killed because the night before when he fell off, he dozed off to sleep in his dream, he saw his grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet said to him, my dear Hussein, today you are coming to me. You will join me and your rest of your family. Your mother said it in Fatima, your father said in Ali, and all the great people, you are joining us today. So Hussein knew that that is the day that he was going to die, and therefore he had no fear. Uncompromising he stood. So there's many lessons that we can learn, but as women, there's also great lessons that you can learn as women because this incident of Karbala would have never been known to the world. It became known because of one lady, the sister of Imam Hussein, who survived Karbala. They didn't kill her. They didn't touch her. She stood firm, but they didn't touch her. Zainab radiallahu anha. The sister of Imam Hussein, she stood firm and she started telling the people what happened on Karbala. This is why we know everything that happened at Karbala through this great lady, the granddaughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidatina Zainab. We know also, and I told you the story of Mishta, the, 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 the lady, Mashita, the lady, Mashita, who was a servant in the court of Fir'aun, who drowned on this day. When he found out that she is a Muslim, because she bent down, she picked up a comb, she used to brush the hair of one of the princesses, and the, hair, the brush fell out of her hand, and she picked it up, and she said, Bismillah. And the daughter said to her father, Mashita believes in Allah the Lord of Nabi Musa. And Fir'aun wanted everyone to worship him. So he caught hold of Mashita. He put her in chains. He made the servants, the police, to whip her. And the blood was streaming from her body. And he said to her, if you give up this worship of this one Allah, then you will be free. I will enrich you, I will give you riches, I'll build your special palace. He made great promises to her. And she said to him, I will never give up Allah. Never will I give up the worship of Allah. For Allah is the true God. You are not a God. And he became so angry. He fetched her husband, a four-year-old daughter, and a tiny newborn baby who was still suckling at her. And he said to her, to Mashita, Fir'aun said to Mashita, if you don't give up your Islam, I'm going to kill your husband. And he killed the husband in front of her eyes. Still, she said, you can do what you want. My Allah comes first. Then he took the four-year-old daughter, and I think every mother's heart will break. Every mother because it's your children. You bore the children. You felt your children coming. You gave birth to your children. And so he grabbed the four-year-old and he slit the throat of the four-year-old girl in front of Mashita. And still Mashita said, By Allah, I will never give up my Islam. And then he took the tiny baby. Now there the mother's heart must break. Which mother will see that her newborn baby who is still drinking milk from her is about to be killed. That mother's heart will just melt. And that mother was about to give in for the sake of that baby. But Allah granted a miracle to take place. And Allah caused this baby to speak. 
like Jesus spoke when he was a newborn baby. And this child of Mashita said, Oh, my mother, as a newborn baby, the baby said, Oh, my mother, do not give up Allah. Keep your belief in Allah. This is a shaitan man. And remember, Allah is waiting, us, waiting for us with a beautiful Jannah. And Fir'aun got a shock to see the baby talking and he got into a rage and he took the knife and he slit the throat of the baby. And immediately the mother said, I am also going to my Allah with my family. You can do with me just what you want. La ilaha illallah, Musa, Musa, Rasulullah. Because that time, Musa was the Rasul of Allah. And they followed Nabi Musa. And when she said that, Fir'aun slit the throat also. And that whole family went straight into Jannah. In fact, they are buried in a spot somewhere between Egypt and Jerusalem. That night when the Prophet ﷺ made his miraj from Makkah to Al-Aqsa, the Nabi ﷺ passed by a certain valley between Egypt and Jerusalem and there was a beautiful smell of musk. And the Prophet asked Jibreel, what is this? What place is this that smells so beautiful and so, and so very, very nice? And Jibreel alayhi salam said, this is the valley where Mashita and her family are buried because their graves are now from the gardens of Jannah. Allahu Akbar. This is the time of Ashura that we reflect. We reflect and we ponder about all these happenings. So Ashura, Muharram means sacred. Muharram also symbolizes newness because it is our new year. It's an Islamic new year. And unlike other communities who dance and sing and go to Kira, we don't do stupid things. No, we adopt the dhikr of Allah. Change our lives. As this is a new year, we're starting our life anew. We're making a new beginning of our lives. We don't know how many years we have lived. We don't know how long we have lived before Allah take us away from this world. You know, as I said to the Jamaat last night also, I said when I was small, the understanding we had of Muharram, please put your phones off or on silent, please. We don't, you know, when I was small, we didn't have a lot of knowledge about the deen. And for us, Muharram meant that packet of sweets that we will be getting as children with a tiki inside. Everyone here know by their age, I know you know what's a tiki. A olap. A tiki, a five cents, but with that little five cents, we could buy a trolley full of sweets because of the baraka of the time. Now there's no more baraka in the time. Sometimes you have to pay five rand for one small little chocolate or sweet, and in no time it is up. No more baraka. But those were the values that our parents installed in us, raising us as tiny little Muslim children. And today we have consciousness of Allah. I'm asking parents, why are you not implementing that same value system into your children today, which our parents placed in us? Why have we compromised our deen? Why have we compromised that beautiful value system if I look today, and I know I'm going to trap on Twitter today, as I did last night, and I will continue to do that, because the haq must be spoken. Truth must also be spoken without the fear of people not going to like me anymore. People not going to like me anymore after this? Fine, 
I hope to impress Allah. All of us must try to impress Allah. Now is the time when our people go around looking for the best fabric and the best material because our daughters must attend the matric balls. And the way some of these matric balls are being held, if a school holds a matric dinner or supper where the parents go with the children, the supervision, no problem. But to send your daughters out on a matric ball with dresses which make them half naked, with the longest slits and the most bare part here, ready to be devoured by the shayateen and the sharks and the perverts out there. And then also we have this habit to arrange tables. Tables laden with food and delicacies and neighbors and families are invited to come and see my daughter off because she's going with a boyfriend to the matric ball. When I billah, how low, how low did we go as a Muslim community? Yes. And the people who come all say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah for haram. They say, MashaAllah, your daughter looks so stunning. And when the daughter leaves the house, and then the mother still say, don't break too many hearts, eh? You're sending your children. It's like you're seeing your children going towards a fire, and you still push them into the fire. It is my duty as an imam to speak out against his practices in the community, whether the community is going to like it or not. Sorry, I don't apologize for the truth. I never apologize for the truth. Because Allah is the truth. And Allah loves the truth. Our prophet was the prophet of truth. Our deen is a deen of truth. And we Muslims must be people of the truth and of the haq. So let, yes, let us ponder over these things, people. Let us reflect over these things. As Ante Wahida say, every mother got the Jannah under your feet, but you're chasing your children to Jahannam. And we will be asked about this. So this commemoration of the 10th of Muharram, which now beautifully also coincide with Women's Day, must make the women understand that every woman, please remember, you are special. I'm not saying that. I'm forced to repeat it. The Dean says that every woman is special. Allah has given you three darajat higher than your husband, than the man. So why are women fighting for equal rights? You want to be equal to the man, but Allah has made you higher than the man. And it is your duty not only as mothers, but also as grandmothers. If you see that your daughter allows her children to do this haram, to dress haram when they go out. To act haram when they go out. It is your duty. Wallahi, Allah is going to keep you responsible as a granny because you must open your mouth. Even if your children get cross for you and they become angry, as long as Allah is happy with you. So there's many things we can learn from haram. I don't want to sit here and babble, babble, babble. We've got time, inshallah, till the class is going to extend till half past 11 today. Because I'm not going to be on the radio today. I told them uh, they on an outside broadcast. So I said it's better also because I have a program which I don't want to rush. So we've got still uh, 40 minutes to our program here today. I would also like, and I'm not going to point to anyone, if anyone want to say something about the greatness of Muharram, please, two minutes. Not five minutes, not ten minutes. 
I want to give as many as you present here to say something. Whatever you say on Muharram, how you feel how Muharram is today in comparison to what it is when you were a child. How different it is. Tell us about it in two minutes. And to Wahida, come to fraud. Quickly, very quickly. If you come forward, come very quickly because every minute that you take time to come forward is a minute wasted. So if you know you're going to say something, come forward now already. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I just want to go in the funny pockets, in the centers, and the kids that are ready. But alhamdulillah, in the time that I've heard it, the kosa that was made for the aan om to eat was special kosa. And we grew up with it, and it became a part of our life. When it's ten of Muharram, we're having special food. But today, nobody's worried about it. It's only takeouts. That doesn't make Muharram special. So that is all I think I want to say, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hawa Abbas. I'm originally from Kimberley. Today I'm missing Kimberley very much because the 10th of Muharram is a special day for us in Kimberley. The mosque that I belong to is we always have um, an arawah on that day, on the 10th of Muharram. And all the aged in Kimberley are invited to come to the masjid. And everybody is treated to a big lunch. We start preparing two days before the time. And on that day, everybody has. Um, we don't normally on that day because most people are fasting. So it's always a day after or a day before that we prepare and we have a big lunch for all the citizens, the Muslim citizens in Kimberley. And we feed everybody and whatever is left of the food that has been prepared and all the mosques and people donate their korban and they uh, come together. Everybody donates, nothing is bought and um, we have a very, very big lunch and for all the citizens and the Muslim citizens, and whatever is left, we go and we dish out to all the people who don't have. So this is, this is a very special time for us in Kimli, and I do really miss being at home. But I'm here, and I appreciate this, this session so much. Um, it's, just, it's just such a special time for us. And this tradition was actually part of what my parents started in Kimberley. And um, it is, and I make so much to ask for them that Allah was grant them Jannatul Fidaus, inshallah. Amen. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh, my beautiful sisters. Um, I just want to quickly, before I say what I want to say, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by, I don't know the name of the person, who is the most important person in your life? He repeated thrice, this is to do with Women's Day, your mother, your mother, your mother, and then comes your father. Okay, so just please remember that, how important you are, especially for today. And I want to latch on now to the 10th of Muharram. 
um, nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes. And one of the events that also took place on the 10th of Muharram was that Nabi Yunus alayhi salatu was was freed from the belly's whale. So Nabi Yunus alayhi salatu was was in three darknesses. I can't go into it all because Sheikh has got my two finger minutes here. Um, he was in the three darknesses in the baddies' wells, and eventually, in the last of the darkness, Nabi Yunus alayhi salatu wa salam asked Allah Most High for forgiveness, and he said a special du'a. Um, he said, "Omilamna shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al zalimin." And um, I would love the sisters to. Get that to, uh, to memorize it, to lead it, and to re uh, learn it to your children, because our children are surely having a very tough time out there. And Allah's protection is all that we need. And as I said, nobody's perfect, and neither am I. So, inshallah, we'll take the dua, um, try to learn it, memorize it, and spread it around. And then I will be failing in my duty if I don't do this. Sheikh Kemal, go over there two minutes. Um, I was taught when I was small that Allah Most High loves certain words. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's very easy on the tongue, these words, but it's extremely heavy on the scale. And these words are, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah al-Azim Let's join in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah al-Azim Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah al-Azim Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah al-Azim I love you all for the sake of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ya kian may koslat isa Shukran nanti warda Shukran jazakallah Baik terima kasih Very much appreciated Aji Khalima Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wa barakatuh everybody Just a few words of inspiration as women We are all um, young at heart, even though that we are in our physical bodies of being just over the hill. Actually, said we really need to move, to move. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that we, I'm Sheikh Ibn Yahyaprat, from Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the family, um, Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Aisha, um, and most importantly, that I would want to say is also with Sayyidina Fatima who is the mother of Sayyidina um, Hassan and Hussein, who was also, like Sheikh said, has been martyred um, in Karbala. Just to take that a little bit further, um, International Women's Day in Iran is celebrated not like International Women's Day across the world, but it is celebrated on the birthday of Sayyidina Fatima. And what they are, prof what her most profound character is being portrayed in the celebrations of, of, of Women's Day, which is a thing that we, as women, should also try to embrace. It is her humility. It is her selflessness in the time, in the terms, in the time when the Prophet was persecuted, and she selflessly took care of him. So that that nurturing, that inherent nurturing um, characteristic that we have as women, we must look at that. But in that time as well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sound a bit radical, but what I'm trying to say is we as women also have to stand up here. In, during that time when the prophet, it was a time, I think everybody knows this word, was a time of jailia. 
first Chaliyah is a time of darkness where women were suppressed, oppressed and oppressed. It's no different today. How many women, how many children, and how many of, uh, whether you are old, young, or 14 months old, you are being physically attacked. These are the things, and this is something that I've read just very briefly, which I say, is this, or should we look at a second Jailia? That is what we are facing, and it is all directed towards women. We are only women. Sheikh said, Sheikh said, but we as women, we have got the power. If there's one thing that I can ask you to do for yourself is sometime during the day, pick up or during the week or during the month, pick up a book and read about women and how you can make a difference. Because you've cried many tears, but you're still standing upright. You have fought a thousand battles, but you still stand upright. Be proud of who you are. And this, with this in mind, we can direct our young generation. Shukran. Mashallah, shukran for that four minutes, Ajah Khalima. <coughs> We've got five minutes left, which means I can have two more people. I'm not going to ask anyone to come. You must feel out of yourself to come. I'm not asking anyone to come. You must decide on yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to each and every one. It's a great honor for me to be here and represent us and be thankful to Allah. But the best gift that I can mention to each and every one is to be thankful, to have gratitude. Because Allah left us all a gift is the 99 names. No one has ever made promises. No God has made promises to anyone but Allah. Where Allah says, I will love you. I will feed you by sustaining you. I will give you the roza, the rizik. So if we serve that great Allah and we love our creator, why do we fault? We fault because we're human. But as women, we judge ourselves too harshly. We question ourselves too harshly. Whatever happens in our lives, Muharram was, is today, it is now, it's the whole year. What we need to have is gratitude. Look within yourself. Because you didn't ask to be here. Allah wanted you to be here. And for that we are thankful. Because we have a purpose. We represent Islam. We are ambassadors. We are rearing kids. We are making the ummah. It's endless and it's strong. But love yourself for who you are. You serve a purpose. And be thankful. Live our life in gratitude. And love each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran for that three minutes. Shukran. <laughs> One more person to come and then we're going to start a short dhikr and ask Allah through that dhikr to bless us all and to take us smoothly and safely through this new year, inshallah, of 1444. I'm not pinpointing to anyone. I'm not going to name anyone's name. You must decide if you want to come forward. But if you come, you must walk. <laughs> oh, Marv. Assalamu alaikum. Nick. Alhamdulillah, Allah has created us so beautifully for us to use to take the pain that we can endure, that a man cannot do. <laughs> and we, Alhamdulillah, has done so much for our families and for everybody. So Allah has granted us so much good in our lives. And we need to show the gratitude that the auntie has said, 
the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that we have in our lives. Alhamdulillah. Shukran. Takbir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but I just want to say I work with kids. Okay, I work with kids on a daily basis and lots of kids, they are so eager to learn. So with teaching them, we need to give over to go and take to the parents also. Because with teaching them, you can also teach the whole family, mashallah. Keep well, inshallah. Happy Women's Day to all. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, mashallah. And... Uh, Alhamdulillah, is there any last person who would want to say something? Anyone? I'm not being pointing to anyone. You have to come, feel free. This is your class. Whether you're from Kimberley, whether you're from PE, whether you're from wherever. Oh, <laughs> khotala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone that stood in front said what I wanted to say. So what I'm going to say is, it's food for thought for all of us sitting here. Well, how are we going forward? And we as parents, grandparents, Sheikh was just saying also previously, um, all the time back, you know, the custom traditions we as children had. But perhaps we can think, put our thinking caps on and bring something forward for our generation now. They don't want the packets with the two cents and the sweets and all that. Perhaps grandmothers, mothers, think how we can bring our children, grandchildren nearer to celebration this day. So I'm over the floors, we've got something to think about for next year, inshallah. How are we going to introduce Tina Muharram to our children and our grandchildren? Shukran, Sheikh. Salam. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Takbir. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. No can of the karma because Aji Khadija et Aseh Haseh. Alhamdulillah. Yes, of course, I completely agree with you on the Khadija. Those times that we had the packets of sweets was a different time. Today you can't give children a packet of sweets with a five cent or ten cent. They'll swear you, you know. So, but there's other ways and means that we can look at how to bring to their minds that Muharram is important, Ashura is important. This is our new year, not the first of January when people smear their faces with all kinds of pains and they dance and go on like monkeys, etc. No, that is not our new year. This is our new year where we wholeheartedly embrace the new year with the thanksgiving to Allah, with dhikr, with dua, with well wishes and say to one another, Kullu am wa antu bi khair or say Muharram Mubarak, may Allah grant you all the best of the new year. But let our children know that this is our real new Islamic year, inshallah. Shukran for everyone. As you see, I didn't pick point to anyone because I don't want people to feel I'm favoring them or making more of this one and I'm highlighting that one because this is what has been said already. Okay? So I am very careful. I don't mention anyone's name, irrespective of what it is. You must feel free. If you have anything to say, you had the chance. And I'm still saying now, before we start the dhikr, one last chance. Is there anyone else who wants to say something? And the Nana. I saw Auntie Nana, but I didn't want to call her. I wanted her to feel part of the class and come forward and say, you have given me two minutes. I will not take three minutes. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, yes, everybody has said their thing, and I just want to reiterate, alhamdulillah, I've been here almost three weeks. I've been here every week with the madrasa. I want to say shukran to my beloved friend there, my Muna, for bringing me every week. I want to say shukran to all you beautiful ladies. Keep it up. 
with our lovely Sheikh here. Alhamdulillah, may Allah grant him all his health and strength. And may Allah Ta'ala take him from, uh, from strength to strength. I just had another words. But I just want to know one more minute, Sheikh. Okay. Uh, in, yeah, I'm away from my family, but every year. And now today I miss my husband so much. Because he was the one that brought all the family together and we had supper at my daughter's place and we would give each and every grandchild a 10 rand of those days, you know. And I mean, this is what we have, a lovely supper and you talk to them and so on. May Allah grant him and all the deceased judge not to feed those amen. And shukran sheikh for being, for me to learn and to take it back. I'll be taking back your lecture of today, inshallah, on our radio IFM. It was a beautiful lecture. Alhamdulillah. Shukar. Muharram Mubarak for each and every one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam and inana shukran. And uh, if you speak of the class on your radio program, say for the means that we will like the means in the Kaab Canal. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Ik wil net my dankbaarheid betoontien oor ons de creator. Alhamdulillah. Ik was 18 toe ek moslim geword. Ek, ek was 70 nou. En ek kan nie vir Allah genoeg bedank nie. Ek kan nie genoeg my handen opsteek dat ek een moslim is nie. Alhamdulillah. Ek kan onthou my skoonmaak was baie jong. Het altijd van mij zo aangehaald in mijn man. Mag Allah van de die wachtste plek in die janda, inshallah. Hij heeft mij bij je aangehaald in die dien. En ik wil net van mijn vriendin, wat van mij geïntroduceerd het in hierdie klas van imam. Bij je shukran aan imam. Laat Allah, uh, mag Allah van imam nog vele, vele jaren voor ons. We gaan inshallah, met goede gezondheid, inshallah. Mag Allah mijn vrienden wat van mij geïntroduceerd het in hierdie klas, van Gia Janna toe vir daus. Ek hoop haar dochter zal luister hierdie boodskap, want ek sê dit met baie groot respect en met baie hartseer in die diepste van mijn hart uit, net uit dankbaarheid voor onze kreheite en voor allemaal wat de rol in mijn leven gespeeld het, wat mij zo so aangehaald het in die dien van islam. Shukran, shukran, want die Jainab, wat ziek is, mag Allah geefa, shifa, sy, zolang ik in een sheikhse klas kom, zolang ken ik vir haar, ek het vir haar geontmoet in haar koets. En ek kan nie elke week hier is sê, want ek kyk achter ou mense, ek kyk jare al achter ou mense, en is baie inspiring, en ik zoek voor Allah dat ik nog altijd kan op 70, ik is geritaaie supposed to be, maar die mensen vouw nog altijd van mij om naar te kom kyk, alhamdulillah, ik kan niet voor Allah genoeg bedank nie, en al die gezondheid en geier en baraka voor allemaal wat vandaag in die klas sit, sheikh, ik zie dat in die diepste van mijn hart, shukran, shukran, shukran voor sheikh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ik is bij je schaam, ik is bij je nervous, en ik is bij je emotional, maaf, als ik je nog een foto gemaakt heb. Inshallah, shukran, Sheikh. Allahu Akbar. Mashallah. Afwan, afwan, afwan. Van had je voor die prachtige woorden, Mashallah. Mag Allah accept, mag Allah annem. And may Allah bless us all. Amen. Just before we start our short dikker, I have some envelopes here, which is uh, for Islamic Dawah Center and for Baitul Aman and the Latifa. You can collect for Baitul Aman. And Masjid Al Quds Sadaka for Muharram on the roof of my mom and all deceased. Shukran, and a sadaka for masjid, soup kitchen, also on the roof of my mom and all deceased. May Allah accept. Amen. And then, Bismillah, zakah to Baitul Aman from Lila Group, also for Baitul Aman and the Latifa. Shukran, Baitul Amakasi. Fuan.
Then this note says, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Can you make dua for a special friend and sister, uh, Naim Abrams? Is it Naim of Naima? As a scrape Naim, but as the sister, is it Natima Naima? Naima Abrams, it's a birthday today. May Allah grant her a good and happy and healthy life and many more to come, inshallah. Is the birthday girl here? Yeah? Naima? Someone wrote Naim. I'm sure it can't be Naim. But anyway, may Allah bless you, Ajina Ima. May Allah grant you many more. And then the lady who lost her phone, Alhamdulillah, her phone is found. She said, Where else has sook to create it in a bag? Or the phone says, What's the one? The phone up the phone, say, Say, Fa, friend, Man, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I look at all the eyes of my phone, but she speaks on the phone. But all the people of the women will die, say Amen. And then there's a note which says, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, trust you well. Hamla can Sheikh make dua for our beloved sister, Zainu Nisa Jacobs Martin, who passed, she passed on one year ago, 7th of August, and all deceased. Of course, it was the Yagetal of Haji Zainu Nisa Jacobs Martin, was very affectionately known as Auntie Nisi. Her sisters are always here, Auntie Jawaya, is she here? Auntie Jawaya? Auntie Jawaya is the achte, and of course Auntie Farida, two sisters. And uh, Auntie Nisi was like a mother to me. I could go any time, pop in there, and she will say Bismillah, and she would treat me like a son, and I really miss her. I was there on Sunday for a yagetal. May Allah grant the Jannah to for those, and may Allah put sabr in the hearts of a husband, but a son, and the family, inshallah. Amen. And also dua for my beloved sister Farida Jacobs. It will be a birthday on the 11th of August. That is Mora or Mora from Andi Jawair, and that is for her sister Andi Farida, who is also sitting at the back. May Islamat for your birthday to come on the Farida. May Allah bless you and grant you many more, inshallah. Can you please make dua for Yasira Fisher on the 21st birthday today, Kanala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her in every decision she makes. May Allah bless her and may Allah grant her immense happiness in this life and in the year after from the De Klerk family. Um, De Klerk family, shukran sheikh. May Allah bless the person. Uh, that is mentioned here, Yasira Fisher, for the 21st, and may Allah grant all the khair and barakah. And of course, Auntie Aisha, what all did afbrik here in the class? She sit now here for the day. She make her own little lawaai da achter in the hoek. But as you can see, the masseet is so still because she sit here for. Auntie Aisha, she requests us to make dua for her granddaughter, Amara, mashallah. Uh, she's two years old today. May Allah bless her and grant her to grow up as a pious Muslim. Amen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh, yeah. Auntie Rukia. And you know Auntie Rukia? Auntie Smiley. He call her Smiley because she's always smiling. And she's also the Uber driver of Auntie, Auntie Nazma. She always push Auntie Nazma to the front and back. She is really not well, I believe. May Allah grant her full shifa. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Let's make a short dhikr and I want everyone to join in, okay? Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. إلى حضرة النبي مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه الكرام الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر صدق الله مولانا العظيم ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم يا لطيف يا حسبنا الله والنعم الوكيل حسبنا الله والنعم الوكيل حسبنا الله والنعم الوكيل حسبنا ونعم الوكيل حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 
غافلون اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد المجيد عدد خلقك ورضا نفسك وزينة أرشك وميداد كلمة دك كل ما ذكرك ذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغاف وعلموا أنه أفضل ذكر حق لا إله إلا لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلمة حق عليا نحيا وعليها نموت وعليا نبعث إن شاء الله تعالى من الآمنين آمين برحمة الله وكرمه جزا الله عنا سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خير بما وأهله للنبي الأم وعلى آله وأصحابه كرام الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين حضر أمه ليلة مولده آسية ومريم في نسوة من الحضيرة القدسية وأخذها المخاض فولدته صلى الله عليه وسلم نورا يتلألأ السنا صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه يا رسول رسول الله يا
Rabbuna Alla Nuril Mubin Ahmadul Mustafa Shahid Al-Mursalin Wa ala ali Wa sahbihi Ajma'in Ya Allah Ya Allah Ya Rahim Al-Mu'minin Sallallahu Rabbuna Alla Nuril Mubin Ahmadul Mustafa Shahid Al-Mursalin Wa ala ali Wa sahbihi ajma'in Al-Fatiha Just before we make dua And then I'll tell Sheikh Mukhtar That he must start A Tuesday morning wife, Housewife class in PE And one Tuesday inshallah We're going to make a bus up And we will come join you in a dhikr in P.E. Inshallah. J. Tell him to look on YouTube. He will hear what I'm saying now. I hope the people with the Dicky Hendrix, with the committee of the Salim Malik, and the committee from Masjid Taqwa, and the Imam uh, Sheikh Mukhtar will open a Tuesday morning class there for the ladies. And inshallah, we will make up a bus or two, come down to PE. We will ask with Atiki Hendricks for uh, accommodation there. And inshallah, then we will go make a nice dicker and a nice program to lift the ladies, inshallah, in PE as well, inshallah. How would you like that? Takbir. Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in O Almighty Allah Our most beautiful, our loving creator O Allah, we love you Allah Because we know that you love us Allah We ask you Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful To forgive all our sins, O Allah O oh Allah, as we embrace this new year of this new year of 1444, Ya Allah, of the Hijri calendar, Ya Allah, bless us in this new year, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us prosperity, Ya Allah. Grant us richness and grant us health and wealth, O oh Allah. And make us true Muslims, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we beseech you for the Muslims in the Palestinian people in Gaza, in Janine, in Sheikh Jarrah, and all over in Palestine, Ya Allah. Help them against the aggressive Israeli army, Ya Allah, who are bombing our people to smithereens, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help the oppressed people in Palestine. Help the oppressed people in Kashmir. Help the oppressed people in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and all over the world, Ya Allah. Grant victory to the Mujahideen, Ya Allah. Grant victory to the oppressors, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and you deal befittingly with the oppressive government of Israel and all the oppressors throughout the world. Deal with them befittingly according to your will, O Allah. Bring peace and, and tranquility, Ya Allah, and calm to the land of Palestine. And make Palestine a free land, Ya Allah, where Muslims... Christians, Jews, and people of all persuasions can live happily and in peace and in coexistence, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us that we go smooth through this new year of 1444, Ya Allah. Bless our lives, bless our homes, bless our families and our children, our neighbors, our families and our friends. Ya Allah, keep us forever in your divine protection, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, grant success to the Al-Quds Foundation, Ya Allah, for the noble work that we are doing in bringing awareness of Palestine to the people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless Masjid Al-Quds and every masjid. Ya Allah, open the doors of the masjid that our people can come back to the masjid. Our people are still so lazy and complacent. Oh Allah, it is as if COVID-19 taught us nothing, Ya Allah. We live far from you, Ya Allah. We run away from your mercy, O Allah, towards the, the traps of shaitan, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, save us from the traps of shaitan. Save us from all evil. Make us clean, Ya Allah, in body, in mind, in spirit, in heart, Ya Allah. Make us loving towards every other Muslim, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I ask you to bless the committee of Masjid Al-Quds. My brother Siraj Parker, my brother Anwar Parker, my Anwar Us Umar, who are always ready, Ya Allah, to serve the masjid, to provide sound for us, to be there for our programs. Bless them and their families, Ya Allah. And our committee of Masjid Al-Quds, who work so hard, Ya Allah. Bless them and their families, Ya Allah. And grant us resounding success in all our efforts for deen, Ya Allah. Accept us for your deen, Ya Allah. Let us live as Muslims. Let us die as true Muslims. And let us meet you, Allah, on the day of judgment as true mu'mineen. Ameen. Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, I specially ask you for all our ladies of the Tuesday morning housewife forum. Ya Allah, bless them, Ya Allah. They are such good people, Ya Allah. They come out every Tuesday for your sake, Ya Allah. We bond as a family on a Tuesday morning. I ask you, Ya Allah, to bless each and every mother and grandmother and sister that is present here and their families and loved ones, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us in your divine protection forever. Amin, amin, amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bi barakati inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه بارك وسلم على إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بفضلك دعوا هم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعوا هم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين just before we greet, who is from Newfields? Any yeah, from Newfields? Anyone? Anyway, this Thursday night, we will have our Palestine Awareness Program in the Masjid in Newfields. You know Newfields? You know Newfields? Newfields, a Masjid there, Masjid Taqwa, where Sheikh Ibrahim Flores is the Imam. We will have our Palestine Awareness Program. Everyone is welcome that we fast on Thursday and that we also break our fast together. Then we have a short program between Maghrib and Ishai. Then the program is finished. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As temperatures drop and winter grips the country, the less fortunate in South Africa are preparing for the harsh realities that this season brings. Africa Muslims agencies on the ground distributing blankets, clothing and other essentials to thousands across the country. Sponsor a winter warmth pack for 280 rands to provide blankets, winter clothing and candles to families in need. Donate via Africa Muslims Agency and help us to spread warmth this winter. Africa Muslims Agency, commemorating 35 years of empowering, educating, inspiring. Alone we can do so little. But together we can change the world for better.
A Noor Educational Centre helps orphans to live a better life. We support them with hope to secure a brighter future. Sponsor an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. A Noor Educational Centre, a place where orphans call home.